this book, Case for Christ, the fucking history, it's not, it's not even an opinion. He's not saying, I want you to believe. He's like, here's the history. Here's why we... Dude, so like, if I told you, if I said to you, Joe, you believe everything you've heard about Alexander the Great, right? You believe it. You believe it. You know, he's fought in these battles. What they say, you just believe it's Alexander the Great. I'll read his biography. You'd say, yeah, sure. But then you'd be like, oh, but I don't, I don't believe... They made the shit up about Jesus. Okay, Alexander the Great... Because what you'll always hear mm -hmm. is, well, the Gospels were written 100 plus years after Jesus died. Alexander the Great's first biography was written like 300 years after he died. So that right there is like, well, his, Jesus is, the historians of Jesus were much closer in time than, say, Alexander the Great. And even furthermore, back then, like the ancient Hebrews, they, they didn't have, before writing, they didn't write anything, so they would memorize the Old Testament and the Scripture, so that you had guys that th they would pass down, right? Mm -hmm. They knew they knew five thousand pages of book inside of their head. So, yes, the Gospels were seventy years later, but they were based off the accounts of people who were living at that time and up to like twenty five years after it. And they say, "Oh well, game of telephone. I can tell you something goes around the room. Telephone. By the time it gets to me, you know, ten people. What you just said is irrelevant. It's a totally different thing. I get it." But what they said is because of that ancient uh, thing of, you know, kind of having to pass down these Old Testaments because they couldn't write, mm -hmm. it would be like if you're playing a game of telephone, but every person, I check with the person before to make sure the word I'm saying is right. Mm -hmm. And then I keep going. So then, then it's going to work because you're constantly checking. So that's what they said happened there. And I was like, okay. Well, the, okay, that's a little bit of confirmation bias because the, the real problem is like who said it originally? So what, and who decided what the words were originally? Okay, that I get, I get that, which is true. But just for Jesus, there was this book was saying that the reason why they believe the historical accuracy of it is because his basically his haters and the disciples were both saying the same thing. So you have the Romans saying, "Yeah, this is what happened." Who hated him, and at that point would be like, "Get this guy out of here." He's basically causing a revolt that's why we have to kill him he's like a somebody getting you know a magic you know a protester today mm -hmm. they were like fuck this guy he's out right and so they were saying yeah what you're saying happened and then the disciples are saying it like a big thing is the resurrection right people say really he fucking resurrected from the dead mm -hmm. and you're like well everybody agreed haters romans and the israel jewish people Everybody agreed he died. That's 100%. That's why when they stab him and they say water came out, it wasn't water. It was fluid from his lungs because he was dead. And that's what would happen to you or I when we die. We have this lung fluid that comes out. So that's what they said. Oh, that's water. And that's what they made him divinity. But it was like a natural thing. He's dead. Everyone agrees. And, and you say, well, they buried him in a tomb. And then the next day or three days later, the tomb's empty. And people are like, so, you know, th that made up. And they say 500 people saw him in the town, Romans and Hebrew. They saw him over the next couple of weeks. They 500 independently sourced people, real, like corroborated 500 people saw him. Mm -hmm. So you say, okay, so there's that. And then the, the, the other conspiracy theory is like, well, the disciples robbed his body. The disciples just robbed his body because uh, they didn't want him. They would hand over crucifixion victims to like the wild dogs. That used to be the way it was. If you got crucified, throw you in a pit, wild dogs eat you or leave you on the cross, birds will eat you. That's how we deal with you. So they're like, that's why they were taking his body. And then you see that, well, that's probably not what happened. And the Romans themselves acknowledge there's no body in that tomb that we put in there three days ago. There's The body is not there and we did it. So... In order to save ourselves, we're going to say the apostles robbed it. But in reality, that's just a conspiracy because the apostles would have no reason to rob it. That would. That, so not, the Romans think the apostles robbed the body. That's a conspiracy. Is the, Why do you say conspiracy? Well, you're just saying a conspiracy to diminish the story. No, no, no. I, I meant I meant conspiracy in the sense of that's what people say as a reason why the the. Do the Romans say that? The Romans have said that. The yeah. Romans said that back then, and then I guess right. conspiracy is the wrong word because I'm not I'm not um, like it's uh it's one story one explanation I'll mm -hmm. say explanation of. But would, if you looked at it like, what's the most logical explanation? Is the most logical explanation that a dead guy came back to life, 
or the most logical explanation that someone took his body because that's what the Romans said. I'm just because I'm in, I'm saying that that you is that came back to life. one time. And I'm not saying I'm crazy about it. I'm just saying, you know what? After reading that book, there was enough things that happened that historical scholars who aren't religious, some are believers, some are not, right. are but like, this existed and this happened. But you're talking about historical scholars from 2,000 years ago. Right. And their knowledge of science and biology and right. life and the universe itself was extremely limited. Right. And so their their entire fundamentals, like everything they believed in was based on based on mythology. Everything right. was based on gods and 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 demons and Okay, so then what about this? Okay. All right, fine. What if the Romans okay, they made it up, right? They I mean I'm sorry, what? I mean the Romans are correct. The mm -hmm. disciples took the body, who everyone agreed okay. was dead. What about the 500 people that saw him in the town over the next six weeks? Did you talk to those people? No. So if this person was this significant um, religious guru figure like Jesus was, right? And he really does have this amazing view of how humanity can live in harmony. And he really does talk to people about this. And he really does preach forgiveness. And he really does like t treat everybody like they're the, the, the same, paupers and hookers and right. everyone. Everyone's just God's children, loved. When that guy's gone, you're going to miss him, man. You're going to miss him bad. And yeah. if you really do have a fundamental view of reality that's based entirely on myth, and you have connected this guy to the son of Christ, or the son of God, rather, this, uh, this, this figure that is brought here to save us, and the Romans took him from us and killed him, and now you know, he died for our sins, and the, the whole thing. Right. You, if you have that in your head, and then someone says, I saw him, like, I saw him too. Right. Like, people see the Virgin Mary in a fucking grilled cheese sandwich. People see things. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean those things aren't there. Right. It doesn't mean that isn't a vision, but it also does mean that people see things that yeah. aren't. And there's a lot of people that are not that bright. Yeah. They're not smart and they're easily led and they're easily manipulated. But it also doesn't mean that Jesus wasn't real. Right. Like all those things. But it's just the likelihood of someone coming back to life is very low. Right. The likelihood of someone taking.